The Gnostics, Part 1c. As discussed in the first lecture on Kabbalah, when the chisel of pure light broke the vessels of lesser light, then the hand of God descended into the cosmos of Isaiah to manifest himself as Adam Kadman, the cosmic template of mankind. When this happened, the realm of Bariah, embodied as the Bereshit Beth cosmology of the Zohar, which had been below, adjacent to Isaiah, the lowest realm of the four worlds of Kabbalah, and the realm of Yetzira, which had been above, embodied as the thirty-two paths of wisdom from the Sefer Yetzira, switched places. Before the fall, Bariah was below and Yetzira was above. In this model, Isaiah was the realm of the cosmos created in seven vast spans of time called cosmic days. Bariah was the Garden of Eden, yet Syrah was the Tree of Life, and beyond this was the realm of Absoluth comprised of Ayin, Ayin Sof, and Ayin Sof Or. After the fall, Bariah and yet Syrah switched places. Bariah had been below, and the Garden of Eden was a real paradise adjacent to the origin of our own cosmos. Yet Syra had been above, and the Tree of Life had been available at the center of the Garden of Eden and Bariah to anyone in the cosmos of Isaiah who ventured back toward the first day of our cosmos creation. After the fall, Bariah was elevated out of reach from Isaiah, and yet Syrah descended to stand between mankind and the Garden of Paradise in the form of a seraphim, or lightning bolt, brazen serpent angel with a fiery sword. In this model, as each moment passes, the entirety of humanity is propelled further and further away from their origin point as a thought in the mind of God beyond the limit of Ayin and outer Atzaluth. Although this cosmological model is based on the Zohar, which can be dated to no earlier than 1st century A.D., Sinai Rabbi Simeon Bar Yochai, it is here where our quest for the origins of Christian Gnostic thought begins to take form from the words of Christ. In this model, based on depictions compiled from the Pistis Sophia, also called Eunostus the Blessed, the Christ himself is recorded as relating the names and the relationships expressed by this model. Here we see an upright zodiac, vertical line on the left, of twelve traits, horizontal dashes, describes the body of Ima as she rises through the three descents, circles along the left side line of Abba, across the four realms on the right. The lowest descent is as the word, above this, the will, above this, mind. Christ himself said he had manifested as Pigera Adamas, another term for Adam Cadman, and appeared to Adam and Eve in the garden to judge them for their sin. He described that he had a twin brother who was called a child born from Sophia, the Shekinah or bride of God, whom Christ called the Autogenes. This twin was the Gnostic Demiurge or evil creator of all, called Samael, meaning the blind, and was the spirit of Satan whom had possessed the accursed serpent, and whom, as such, had bred with Eve. According to the Christ in Pistis Sophia, Eve and Samael bear two offspring. One was called yad heh the tetragrammaton name of God. The other was called Elohim, the contemporary substitution in scribal colophons for Adonai, an earlier title of God pre-Babylonian captivity. Yadhevadhe was the god of all good, and Elohim the devil of all evils. According to various legends of the Jews collected from oral traditions by Louis Ginsburg in the 19th century, 
as well as provided in Hebrew manuscript and English translation both by Steve Savidow, late 20th century Kabbalist. There is a book available to this day that originated as a grimoire or book of magic, proto-science, given to Adam immediately after his and Eve's expulsion from the Garden of Eden by an angel described as an Ethiopian in some sources, named Raziel. Supposedly, the book of Raziel described all the visions Adam had once seen while in paradise, but which he would now never see again following the expulsion. This model shows us the combination of several Gnostic apocryphal sources' descriptions to relate them all into one larger model containing them all. In the central portion of the Gnostic model for the events following the expulsion is this tetractus of ten characters within three sectors or zones. In Eden above are Christ as Pigera Adamas or Adam Cadman, immortal Eve, and the demiurge twin of Christ called Yaldabaoth, meaning the blind. Immortal Eve and Yaldabaoth came together to conceive Cain as immortal and wise. But Cain dwelt in purgatory and was torn between the twin headed spirits of Yadhevadhe and Elohim, good and evil, and who eventually succumbed to sin when he himself killed his brother Abel, whom immortal Eve had conceived with Pigera Adamas, Christ. Abel had occupied all three realms, living in Eden with Adam and Eve, in the mortal realm with Seth and the fallen Adam and Eve, and finally dying at the hands of his brother Cain in purgatory. Because Cain and Abel were born of Eve while she was immortal, they were giants, called Nephilim. Cain was born evil, and Abel good. However, the third son of Adam and Eve, from whom we are supposedly all descended, Seth, was conceived after the fall and expulsion from paradise. This diagram is compiled from the description of relationships between these Genesis Torah characters from the Gnostic secret apocryphon of John, an apostle of Jesus Christ, from words supposedly spoken by Jesus Christ himself. All of this occurred in and around the Garden of Eden that is, the realm of Bariah within the four worlds of the Kabbalah, when it was still below Yetzirah and above Esaiah. Yetzirah was present within the Garden of Eden as the seven principles expressed on the right comprised of the middle path of the combined trees of life and knowledge. In Eden, the tree of life was granted Adam and Eve to eat from and to be immortal. However, Adam and Eve, deceived by the serpent, ate the forbidden fruit of the tree of knowledge, and that resulted in their expulsion from Eden. When this happened, Adam and Eve were cursed to eat from only the tree of knowledge, and then they saw the tree of life turn into the tree of death, and Eden, as the realm of Bariah, ascend beyond their reach, protected now by the seraphim angel with a flaming sword, upon a lattice shaped alike the 32 mystical paths of wisdom from Sefer Yetzirah's description of the tree of knowledge of Kabbalah. Thus we see that the cursed nature of man is to be driven forth away from his home by the will of God. The path of attaining and achieving prolonged Christ consciousness is a path of recapitulation, reuniting the mind of a person with the Godhead of their Creator. Scaling backward the seven days removes the sevenfold curse placed upon the seven generations and the seventh son of the seventh son. Scaling the tree of knowledge, we return into the Garden of Eden and can approach through the lower and upper realms described in the Bereshit Beth volume of Zohar into the presence of the Abba and Ima consciousnesses within the mind of God. And once we have returned into the Garden of Eden, we may look down toward Isaiah from above Pariah, and we may look to Yetzirah on our side, 
for we shall see the four worlds as they were before the fall, when Isaiah was below Bariah, Bariah below Yetzirah, and Yetzirah below Adzaluth. Here again, from a position outside of and beyond the Tetractus of ten Sephirot of Yetzirah in Eden, on the same level as the lowest aspects of the Autogenes, the hind parts of God, in Ion Sof R, at Saluth. Here we see that the Autogenes, God, is the immortal son of an eternal father, and that God, in turn, procreated with Sophia to beget Christ, also called Pigera Adamas, or Adam Cadman, the mental template for human evolution. Just as in the Gnostic Gospel, the Pistis Sophia, we can see it was with the Autogenes that Sophia procreated to beget Christ as Pigera Adamas, but that it was purely from forethought or clairvoyance, the female aspect of wisdom, that Sophia, the mother of Christ, begat Christ's twin brother, Samael the Demiurge. It was Samuel who, following Eve's eating the forbidden fruit on the tree of knowledge, seduced her and raped her to sire by her the twin-headed devil god of yad and Elohim, whom Christ is recorded as calling the Error of Moses, author of the Torah of the Old Testament of the Bible. So we see this tangled web woven by these ten in Eden, with Christ fucking immortal Eve, immortal Eve fucking Yaldabaoth, Yaldabaoth fucking mortal Eve, and mortal Eve fucking mortal Adam, all under the watchful eye of the Autogenes fucking Sophia. Moreover, once the family are expelled from Eden and enter the land of Nod to the east of Eden, there are other mortals, the wives of Cain and Seth, as well as others like Cain, the Nephilim giants, titans, or sons of God. To the mortals who lived in Nod, the family from Eden were called the Anunnaki. By the lifetime of seven Nephilim giants, sons of Cain, and twelve mortal humans, sons of Seth, a flood was sent by God to destroy all life on earth. It was in this era when Enos, son of Seth, and Enoch, son of Cain, were born. When Adam and Eve moved with Seth into Nod, Cain, who had slain his brother Abel, went into exile in the land to the north, called later Edom. Edom was a land of red clay caves believed to have been in what is now modern Gaza, Palestine. This was when, from the wives of men in Nod, Seth and Cain both chose wives with whom Seth bore Enos and Cain bore Enoch. Thus, the Nephilim giants of Edom established five kingdoms, the ruler of each of which was a Nephilim, and who were called collectively the five kings of Edom. Then the flood came to destroy all life on earth. It was sent to snuff out man, the giants, and all animals. The real reason the flood occurred at that time was natural. It happened when it did because of the shifting of our planet that occurs over the durations of aeons according to the solar measurement of Earth's polar precession. Thus, just as Yaldabaoth, as Samael, bred with immortal Eve in one aeon to conceive Cain, in the next aeon, Yaldabaoth coupled with mortal Eve to conceive yad Enoch, and Elohim, Enos. Insofar as Yaldabaoth signifies the entirety of the round of twelve aeons in the form of the twelve archons, there are aeons of Samael, Cain, and Abel on the usual wheel of the twelve archons, as well as nine others whose names remain mysterious aside from to researchers of the pre-diluvial apocryphal book of Enoch, where they are described as the other Nephilim giants. Thus, each of the fallen angels, or Nephilim giants, ruled as an archon over one of the twelve aeons. As described in the last lecture, the twelve archon rulers over the seven powers 
was a prototype model for what we now know as the 12 signs of the Babylonian zodiac and the seven visible planets. Here we see Cain and Abel with Belus between them and Sabaoth on the opposite side. This is because it was Samael who conceived Cain with immortal Eve, but it was Belus who conceived Abel with mortal Eve. Samael, the Demiurge, is the twin brother of Pigera Adamus, or Christ, and so it was he who deceived immortal Eve by pretending to be his twin, Pigera Adamus, Adam Cadman, or Cosmic Man, and thus it was also he, Samael or Yaldabaoth, who conceived the plan to go down to the wives of men and to breed with them, and who thus became the fallen angels or Nephilim giants described by Enoch. It is said that of those who went along with his original plan, only Sabaoth repented. In Enoch, the name of the leader of the fallen angels, the Anunnaki or Grigori, is Shamiaza. Shem, literally, means the name. So, Shem Yeaza means the name Aza. Thus, it was Azrael, the fallen angel, whom the others followed. They made a pact to go down to the wives of men and make them their own. Shemiazah was their leader. However, eventually, we are told by Gnostic scriptures also, Sabaoth repented. But Sabaoth was Yaldabaoth, who was Samael or Sacklus, who was Shemiazah, who was Azrael, who was Raziel. All of these are names for the same fallen angel, cognate to the Christian Lucifer, who became Satan when cast out of heaven at the same time as Adam and Eve were cast out of Eden. The Golden Dawn, Part 1D As we descended in previous lectures from the Tree of Life of Yetzirah before the Fall to the Tree of Death of Yetzirah after the Fall, we study now the Tree of Knowledge as the main aspect of HaKabbalah today. Likewise, we who study HaKabbalah today are no strangers to the concept of the slippage of the middle pillar from this arrangement described by Isaac Luria, the blind, to this arrangement designed by the Ari of the Safed school showing the lowest Sephirot, Malkuth, the kingdom, on the tree of knowledge to have slipped down one notch from its position on the tree of life. This was the tree of knowledge diagram used by Kabbalists from the era of the Dark Ages until the turn of the 20th century. At the turn of the 20th century, around the time Yehuda Ashlag was completing his commentary on the whole 23-volume Zohar in Hebrew, an Englishman named S. L. McGregor Mathers translated a small portion of the already abridged Tikkuni Zohar into English, calling it Kabbalah Dinudata. In Mather's translation, he shows the anatomy of God as Adam Kadman, overlaid by the tree of knowledge of the ten Sephirot. Thus, we may finally see the equivalent for Adam Kadman of the twelve signs of the zodiac placed up and down the body of the Shekinah. Mather's Kabbalah Dinudata offers the most comprehensive guide for completely comprehending her Kabbalah at the turn of the 20th century. Shortly before the publication by Mathers of Kabbalah Dinudata, the French Kabbalist Eliphas Levy was working on depictions for the various concepts he had learned from a study of the Tikkuni Zohar in Hebrew. As we saw in the earlier lecture on Adam Kadman, Levy provides us with this depiction of God lowering himself into the cosmos of the four worlds of Kabbalah. Levy has chosen the hexagram pattern to depict this concept. Also using the hexagram around the same time as Levy, who used it to symbolize the Kabbalistic process of God descending into the cosmos, was Madame Helena Petrovna Blavatsky, founder of the Theosophical Society 
devoted to rewriting the story of the Bible to incorporate the wealth of New Age thoughts in Europe at that time, who used the hexagram as a symbol for the Western mystery tradition, the right-hand path, contrasted to the swastika, symbolic to theosophy of the Eastern tradition, the left-hand path. In the earlier version of the Theosophical Society's logo designed by H.P. Blavatsky herself, the hexagram contains her own initials, is crowned by the same swastika logo later used by the Nazis, and surrounded by an Ouroboros or snake eating its own tail. In the later version of the Theosophical Logos Society, redesigned after H.P. Blavatsky's death, the hexagram contains an Ankh cross. The swastika is switched to its arrangement as a traditional symbol of Buddhism, and outside the Ouroboros is the slogan, There is no religion higher than truth, a common saying from the era of rationalism and reason following the Enlightenment a century before. The significance of changing this logo was due to the original Blavatsky orientation of the swastika being adopted by the Nazis. However, this subtle difference has been overlooked by far too many subsequent and even modern day followers of Blavatsky's theosophical rewriting of the biblical myths. Her intention was to form the mythological aspect of a New Age religion that was missing only one aspect, a secret doctrine, a single working dogma that could unify the whole plotline for her mythological rewrites. As a result of this original adoption by the Nazis of Blavatsky's symbol signifying the East or the Oriental left-hand path to enlightenment, the error persists to this day that the Nazis were perpetuating the lineage of the Eastern secret chiefs or transcended Mahatmas whom Blavatsky claimed constant contact with. The symbol shown here from the modern Rylian UFO cult, containing the Nazi-oriented swastika inside the hexagram, perverts Blavatsky's intended meaning of these symbols as the Eastern and the Western mystery traditions to mean the Nazis and the Zionist Hebrew diaspora who stole Palestine from the indigenous Muslim Semites to form the nation of Israel. Before there was a nation of Israel, or a Nazi party Third Reich in Germany. Following Blavatsky and Levy's use of the hexagram symbolism, a group was formed by English and French Freemasons and Rosicrucians devoted to the study of Kabbalah and calling themselves the Golden Dawn, who attempted to unify the entire Western mystery tradition into a single cohesive whole in the form of knowledge lectures given in an order along with initiation rituals given per degree. The logo of the Golden Dawn was thus a hexagram showing a sunrise above an ocean, meaning their summing up of the Western mystery tradition was an attempt to provide Blavatsky's myths with a working dogma to unify her New Age mythology. The origin of the founding charter for the first Golden Dawn group the so-called cipher manuscripts, remains a mystery in itself. However, regardless of their origin, the works done on Hakabalistic topics and concepts by the members of the Golden Dawn group were entirely their own work, and a wonderful collection of additions to Kabbalistic Western mystery tradition. In this Golden Dawn depiction of Adam Cadman as Christ, we see the angels whose wings support him are labeled R.C., for Rosy Cross, that his body contains the 32 mystical paths of wisdom of the Tree of Knowledge, and that he stands on a globe between the symbols of the sun and moon, signifying Earth as Malkuth, the kingdom. In this Golden Dawn group depiction of the Garden of Eden prior to the fall of man, we find God as an older Adam Cadman, suspended by the Sephirot on a cross before twin pillars below which stands Shekinah, surrounded by fourteen branches, the seven planets twice, on the tree of life, atop the coiled representation of the seven-headed serpent called Set by the Egyptian, Typhon by the Greeks, 
and Satan by the Hebrews. The fall of man, as described by Israel Regardi and A. E. Waite, members of the Golden Dawn group, resulted from the shattering of the shells in the layers between the three Hakabalistic worlds above Isaiah, and when it was mimicked within the spiritual composition of man, caused his fall from immortal Cadmon to mortal Adam, and resulted in his exile from paradise. According to Waite, Rigardi, Mathers, Crowley, and the others in the Golden Dawn group, this slippage of the middle pillar results in an eleventh non sephirot opening on the middle pillar between Kether, the crown sephirot at the apex, and Tiferet, meaning beauty and positioned above the heart along the middle pillar of man's spiritual composition, the template of Adam Cadman. This hole within the figurative veil of the abyss, they named Death, meaning knowledge, after Gnosis, meaning the quest to know. In this second Golden Dawn group depiction of the Garden of Eden, we see the same characters after the fall of man and the expulsion from paradise. Below the triple-faced angel, we see the Sephirot as a flaming sword. Above the arms of the cross, we behold the four elements, and consuming Adam, Cadman, and the Sephirot on the cross are the seven heads of the great Leviathan, the red dragon of revelations, loosed from the pit by Eve. In this Golden Dawn depiction, we see the seven-headed serpent called Set Typhon, or simply Satan, consuming Lilith, Adam's first wife before Eve, who we behold crucified onto a cross alike the Christian mythos of Jesus Christ. And in this depiction from the Golden Dawn era of 20th century Kabbalism, we see the three supernal sephirot on a tree of knowledge with lowered middle pillar Sephirot, where Adam Cadman, the cosmic template as an old man, stands with his crown in Daath, his arms extended above the left and right columns below their supernal caps, and his feet resting upon Malkuth, the kingdom, the Nader Sephirot. So we see that now, at the turn of the 21st century A.D., we who study Kabbalah have come a long way from the origins of our craft in studying the nature of our cosmos. In this familiar depiction from the mid-20th century Philosophical Research Society, a later adjunct of the Golden Dawn group, of Adam Cadman as a philosophical atlas, supporting the twelve signs of the Babylonian zodiac at the levels of Death and the Veil of the Abyss, and covered over by the seven orbits of the planets at the level of the veil of the temple, with one foot on land and one foot in the sea, like the angel of revelations. The western path of ascending the ten sephirot on the tree of knowledge is the path to reunion of one's being with one's own genius, higher self, or holy guardian angel. This path forms the quest set upon by the soul, once it awakens within the body while alive or at the time of death and sets its desire to returning to reunion with the single, omniversal spirit of Adam Cadman's Godhead mind. The one soul is a microcosm reflecting the one spirit as a macrocosm. Hence, we are all gods and reflections of God in one another's eyes, and all of us together are the one true God.